Well, it, it's been a while, I'm not gonna lie, but we are back. And we're kicking off the Queen of the Ring tournament. It's gonna be quite interesting to see because we have eight people that could easily walk out of here as the, the first ever Queen of the Ring. And we are kicking off the show with G and I'll admit, I'll admit, this could be a very good opportunity for her because, let's be honest, she hasn't done a lot, but hey, think things can change for people. Opportunities arrive for people at different times, and this could be her moment. But who knows, with the caliber of talent here, it really is anybody's game, and it's so interesting to see at that moment. I would say we have four very, very interesting first round matchups that hopefully deliver for you guys. And I do want to apologize for taking so long to get this round done. Just things happen. And yeah, it is what it is. But let's stop breaking the fourth wall. Let's continue with what's happening over here. It's coming out next, representing the biome. It is Trish Renee. Once she makes her way down to the ring. There she is. Now, we still don't know the condition of Steph Cleave. Last we heard, she is doing alright. She is rehabbing. And she should be she should be good to go soon. We don't know when soon is, but we're going to assume that soon will mean. Uh, soon. <laughs> but, you know, Trish Renee, she has been probably one of the dark horses of the women's division. You know, always near that women's IC title, but could you imagine if she walked out as Queen of the Ring and established herself potentially near that women's world title spot? Who knows? Who knows? I mean, we got a very interesting first round matchup here. We're going to see how their styles, you know, how their styles match, how they mix. And uh, something tells me we're in for an interesting opening matchup here for round one of Queen of the Ring. And I will say that uh, I, I know it's going to be somewhat confusing for uh, for the fluctuating, you know, the alternating rounds and all of that, but fingers crossed, it's not too confusing. But here we go. Twenty minutes on the clock, like your standard retro matchup, and here we go. Colonel type to start Trish Renee gaining the advantage, but G pushing Trish off the ropes, ducks under. Goes over and oh, oh, what a spinning backbreaker to start off the show. Trish Renee having to take a little bit of a back seat here. Nice inverted DDT. And now, oh, wait, but Trish. Notice how cautious she was walking towards G, knowing the tactics of the Supreme Phoenix, that the fast, the agile, and just the overall very aggressive nature that she possesses. And ooh, what a bulldog. And you gotta think, how does Trish Renee counter this? You know, oh wait, wait, hold up. Taking some jumps here, trying to get a little bit of height. Oh my God, the standing 450. Kick out a one, but my goodness. Ah, nice hurricane runner there from Trish Renee. Turning around. Oh, wait. We're going to snap the arm. Ooh. I. Oh. <laughs> I, that's very uncomfortable to see. Oh, what a clothesline. And if I sound a little off on commentary, I do apologize. I am just trying to get back into the swing of things. So if my commentary is off for the like for these matches again, my my sincerest apologies. It 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 just happens, man. But now, look at this. The strikes. Oh, oh! 
a backbreaker from G. Showing that she's not just agility, not just high flying, but she has the power. Which is uh, very weird because Trish Renee has the size and I would believe the weight advantage. Let's now look at this. G looking to go for it again, looking to take the leap. Standing 450 again. I don't know if that's, like, I, I, I honestly don't know how impressive that truly is because I've never stepped in that rank. Ooh, I've never tried to hit a 450 in my life. So, who knows? Ooh, nice for Arcan Rada there from Trish Renee. This is where Trish Renee has to start getting things going for herself here because if she doesn't, then that is when G will capitalize and that is when we could consider Trish Renee out of this matchup. Nice Rampage DDT there from Trish Renee. Trish has to keep going. She has to prove that she has the gas in the tank to go in this matchup. She has been on the back foot for the majority of this matchup. And now is the time. The taunts from both women there. But now look at this. G. Oh my goodness. And once again, changing the, the, the pace of this matchup, both of these women, oh, there's a chop, there's a kick, and now, oh, another backbreaker, really got, really targeting the back of Trish Renee here. That's now, oh, wait, what's about to happen? Lift it up, thinking power bomb, might be thinking crucifix bomb here. Oh, but Trish Renee with the perfect counter there, nice arm drag. Got to keep the pressure going though, because as soon as Trish Renee eases off the gas, lets go of the pressure that she's building up, that's when now uh, that's when she capitalizes. We've seen it in this matchup. It's now Trish Renee hammerlock applied, thinking armbar. Look at this, the hammerlock arm breaker. As G wisely rolling out finding that spot and now catches a oh wheelbarrow face buster going into the cover one oh not even a two she can't believe it she's gonna have to here is now trish renee oh what a shot and now all oh, thinking another rampage ddt oh what a, what's that a, a, a flip sent on there from Trish Renee. Oh, went for a 450 of her own. G with the knees up. And now, oh, wait. Lifting up Trish Renee. Detonation kick. I'm gonna try and go for the cover here. One, two, kick out at two there from Trish Renee, though. What an opener this has been. Still wondering, what is it going to take for one of these two to hit the second gear? Oh, wait, hold up. We might be seeing the second gear right here. Oh, nice double axe handle there. I guess that's one thing where the, where the height disadvantage really comes into play. You can hit those moves where they normally wouldn't hit. And I'll back break it to the outside. It's now, oh, look at this. Oh, wait, Trish Renee now going to use the steps to her advantage. This is where things get interesting. Thrown onto the apron. Referee at six. They have to be wary of that ten count. Trish Renee going up top. Oh, wait. Oh! I believe that's the code of rebirth. Out of the sky, two, and it's over. All it takes is one maneuver. <laughs> and she advances to the semi-finals of the Queen of the Ring tournament as we move on to the next round. Well, after that, uh... I guess I can only describe that as a very surprising ending. We now move on to our second first round matchup. It's coming out first. It is a uh, member of Control Tar. And I do need to bring this up because obviously we, did, we saw that Kenito did not have Samson Katuri at ringside. 
and now Kyrie Sampson does not have Charlotte Yuri at ringside because of the stakes of this tournament because of the fact that the winner gets uh, you know a, a, a briefcase giving them a shot at, at the Women's World Championship managers have been banned from ringside all sort of outside help is indeed banned from ringside but uh, something tells me that this should be an interesting matchup because here's the thing Tony Taylor first ever CEW Women's Champion when we brought back the women's division in season 3 Kyrie Sampson wasn't exactly the first ever but became the longest reigning women's champion in history I don't think these two have ever squared off in a CEW ring before no they have not so this should be very, very interesting to see what happens here. And you have to think, with some of the gear colors that Tony Taylor has worn before, has Charlotte Yuri been potentially considering Tony Taylor for control of time? I don't know. I think, I think they have enough people as is. But you never know. Like I always say, you never know what's going in the head of control of time here. You don't know what plans they have up their sleeves, and honestly, it's very scary to think about. But anyway, uh, first round matchup. Let's say it again. 20 minutes on the clock. Here we go. Now look at this. Okay, another collar and elbow tie up to start. Tony Taylor with the advantage, taking it into the wrist lock. As now Kyrie has the advantage here. And oh, look, and they use the advantage, pushes Tony Taylor away, and there's a bulldog. Notice how both matches have started off very, very, uh, very quickly. Oh, what a boot there from Tony Taylor. Who now, oh, catches Kyrie looking to work on the legs. Could this be a smart strategy? Going for the knees, going for the legs. Oh, what a forearm. Something tells me that this matchup is going to be a little bit on the brutal side. We've seen in the past a new style of Kyrie. Oh my goodness. The knee right to the skull. you got to finger the whiplash on, on a maneuver like that. That's now, oh my god, Kyrie, no. Oh my god. Ooh, sunset flip onto the outside. And my goodness. As now, oh no, Kyrie, don't do this. Oh, power bomb onto the LED. And this is what I mean by the more aggressive side of Kyrie Sampson wiping her hands clean, saying that it's on Tony Taylor basically. Oh, but now look at this, Tony fighting, but Kyrie here with the early advantage. It's not like she's gonna let that advantage go, but old oh, Tony. Fighting her way out of the corner. Nice knee drop there. But now look at this. Another forearm. Oh, and an elbow too. On the on the uh, middle rope. Calling up Tony Taylor. This is not good. What on earth is Kyrie looking to do? Missile drop kick but misses. Now Tony Taylor gonna look to try and use this to our advantage. Gonna try and gain the momentum. Nice clothesline. Gonna look to gain some momentum here in this matchup. Ooh, rolling forearm. My goodness. And now look at this. Here comes the striking prowess of Tony Taylor. Knee to the midsection. Up on the middle rope. Ooh. Nice double axe handle, misses the stop, but it could have been a fake out, but it doesn't matter. And now what on earth is Kyrie doing? Took the wrong time to taunt, or did she? Ooh, perfect counter if you would, and look at this. Kyrie saying that this is easy. And I wouldn't necessarily say this is easy because Oh no. Oh not again! Goes in for the cover. One, two, ooh, kick out at two there. Oh wait, but Kyrie already looking for it. Oh wait, she's saying that it could be over. K 
catches her. Got the underhook. Oh, there's the Call of Chaos. The Call of Chaos 1, 2 to advance in the tournament. Oh, she's not done. Why wouldn't you be done? Oh, locking in an armbar. Because we know for a fact that Tony Taylor likes to hit those strikes. So perhaps this is just trying to wear her down. I mean, we've seen Controlatar not go for the kill, not go for the finish, but more go for the damage, if you would just now. Okay. Oh. Oh. Spiking her into the map. Gonna try a lock. Two. Not enough, though. Tony almost advanced to the semi-finals. And honestly, spiking someone's head on the mat is probably one of the best ways to do so. Oh, but now look at this. Kyrie with the elbow. And oh, oh. Can the taunts. We've seen this before in the past from Kyrie. Just the fact that she is a, very much a showboater. And now look at this. Kyrie going up top. Looking for it. Double axe handle. And Tony Taylor has been on the back seat for a lot of this matchup. I think that power bomb did a lot. Oh, right to the skull. That knee right to the face of the rolling neck breaker, if you would. Oh, wait. Went for the call of chaos. And now gets caught. We're going to do it again. Hurricane Rana right into the mat. And the old. Ah, uh, she noticed that Tony Taylor might have been looking for a little bit of black magic. Now look at this, Tony with the combos. And now in the corner. Are we going to see it? Are we about to get a little bit of... Oh, oh wait. Kyrie with the reversal. Catches a takedown. Lift it up. Taking a running shot. Oh, spinning heel kick. And just when you thought Tony was going to get the advantage here, once again you see Kyrie proving perhaps that Tony was only champion because of the limited roster. I don't know. Oh, there it is again. As now. This could very well be over. Oh my goodness, we've seen this a lot from a lot of the roster. The kiss of death and the call of chaos. Dragging Tony away from those ropes, removing any chance of a potential rope break too. And an advancing to the semi-finals. Kyrie Sampson gets it done and of course he's laughing. Of course. I mean, Tony tried, but that power bomb onto the LED early on, that was just brutal, man. That was just brutal. Oh. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Come on. Come on. You've advanced in the tournament. You don't have to do all this. She has a chair. She has a chair. What on earth? Yo, why is there no security? Like, this happened at Mania. This happened at Mania and nothing was done about it. Like, surely, surely, Eugene and, and CEO Byron surely have to have hired some sort. No. Okay, here I was complaining about security and this, this doesn't look good. No. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, the leg drop with the chair. Waving goodbye to Tony Taylor. As Kyrie advances to the semi final. Someone's going to have to check on Tony Taylor here. That was just brutal. What on earth? Well, uh, 
Tony Taylor has been sent to the medics. We will notify you when we know more. Um, which, I'm going to just say this now, rolls into a cheap plug. Um, if you haven't already, please, if you have Twitter, please follow us on Twitter, at the Seedom Network, um, for updates, if, 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 you, if you care about that stuff, that you should. But anyway, my goodness, this, this has already been a chaotic first round. But something tells me we're about to slow it down a bit. We're about to get a little bit of technical, a little bit of a little bit scrappy here. That's coming out. It is Eliza Stone now. If you know the brackets, you know that this is a match that I'm personally looking forward to. Eliza Stone, Jessica Smith. This could be brutal. This could get very, very brutal. But anyway, Eliza Stone waits. For Jessica Smith. Now the question is, is Samuel Cross going to be here? No, he's not because managers have been banned from ringside. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it wouldn't have surprised me, honestly, if Samuel Cross found a way. I mean, he gets beaten up more than Jessica Smith. So let's be real here. And uh, I just thought I'd clarify... Where it's the off season, wins and losses don't matter. We're just having a tournament. People are gonna lose. It is what it is. Um, so yeah, it, it's not gonna affect the win loss records going into the the new season. Not sure when that's gonna happen, but uh, again, I will keep you up to date on whenever I decide to start working on the next season. Um, for I just say that during this entrance because yeah. Um, but this is going to be an interesting first round matchup because we now know one side of the brackets, which is going to be G versus Kyrie in the semi-finals, and then we know their history from a certain company that I, I I'm not going to mention, but yeah, it is what it is. But anyway, here we go, and another collar and elbow tie up to start. My goodness. I, I mean, you can expect it from these two technical brawlers. Something tells me these two these two are going to be able to do the, uh, the chain wrestling very well here. Look at this. We're already getting like 30 seconds of chain wrestling here. As, oh, Eliza Stone locking that Fujiwara armbar in a little bit more. That's oh, okay. We're getting the taunts here. Eliza Stone telling her to, to square up and we're getting another collar and elbow tie up. Oh my goodness. Oh, shot to the face there from Jessica Smith is now all weight pushed away. Oh, what a shot. Was that just a stiff right? Eliza Stone hit a stiff right there as now all weight gets caught. Big time face buster goes into the cover. Not even a one. But you know, it's always worth trying your luck with some of those early pins because you could catch your opponent off guard. And now look at this. Eliza Stone working Jessica Smith in the corner here. Lifting up Jessica Smith with the alley-oop bomb. And now, oh, oh. Again, look at this. Just the technical prowess of Eliza Stone looking to wear down Jessica Smith here. It's Jessica in a lot of trouble here, able to roll out though. Gets caught, oh big time back elbow. And, oh clothesline into the corner. And oh, a meteora. And already you can see, oh wait, triangle choke. Triangle choke applied. And I, I, I knew this was coming, this is going to be an exchange of Submission holds, technical holds, a, a lot, a lot of just chain wrestling, a lot of submissions, and a lot of brutal strikes here as Eliza Stone finds her way out of the triangle choke. As now our way catches a sleeper hold, and this is what I meant by we're gonna see that exchange of submission holds here. Oh, 
Big time jawbreaker there from Jessica Smith, who needs to compose herself, needs to keep herself in this in this match up. Nice suplex there. Eliza Stone forced her roll to the outside. And I don't think we're really going to see a lot from the outside from these two. These two like to keep it in the ring. And look at this. Here's the taunt. Something tells me these two kind of find themselves a little bit of equal footing here. Oh, what a kick. Into the cover. One. Kick out of one. I did not expect that. Eliza missed the knee and then just a side kick. A spinning kick from Jessica Smith. is now all the way Wait, what? Ooh, ooh, the DDT. And this is what I meant by I was looking forward to this matchup. Misses the knee strike. Oh, and gets caught with a knee strike there from Eliza Stone. I told you all I was looking forward to this matchup, and so far it is not. It is not disappointing. Big shot there to the chest from Eliza Stone into a knee drop as well. Oh, head scissors there, but in the ropes. And now Eliza Stone taking Jessica Smith away from the ropes and might be looking to lock it in again, realizing it was a bit of a rookie mistake to apply that hold so close to the ropes. But now Jessica Smith in a lot of trouble here, able to turn herself around, kind of expected from someone who is good at submission maneuvers into a guillotine. These two just trading submissions, trading strikes, and that is what you love to see in your wrestling matchups, or at least I do. Uh, I, I know some people would prefer flippy stuff. Wrestling subjective. Uh, this commentator, he likes... He, he, oh, nice air raid crash. As I was saying, I, I, I like the grapples. I, I like the more technical, more brutal stuff. So now look at this. Eliza Stone going to work on the arm. And continuing to work on those arms. Jessica Smith in a lot of trouble after uh, the reversal from the guillotine. And now look at these strikes here. Shot to the face into a knee strike. Oh, and an elbow to the skull. My goodness. And going back to those arms, Eliza Stone really trying to prove that she deserves to move on in this Queen of the Ring tournament here. And normally we see the people who have these uh, uh, aggressive, you know, like, who are able to pick up the momentum. Again, like I said, I haven't been doing culture in a while. I'm bound to botch. Oh, wait, what on earth? What on earth? Oh! Curb stomp. Just stomped her down. And now, lifting her up. GTS into a German. One, two, kick out of two. Wow. As I was saying, it's those people who pick up the momentum, who are just able to turn a match around into their favor, are the ones that win. Oh, sit out, Uranagi. And Eliza Stone proving that she can do exactly that. Stonelock. We've seen this before from Eliza Stone. The Stonelock applied. Jessica Smith is struggling. And like I said, Eliza Stone has really been... The aggressor in this matchup, hitting those big time maneuvers, sort of locking in those submission holds for longer, and something tells me if Jessica Smith doesn't find a way out soon, this will be over for her, and her dreams of becoming Queen of the Ring will be over in the first round here. How long has this hold been in? Jessica Smith is just fighting for her life here, trying to hold on, trying to find some sort of way to turn herself over, to try and gain that advantage, but Eliza Stone refusing to let go of the hold, but here we go, Jessica Smith somehow finding a way to turn around, but what damage has been done to the knee, to the Achilles, oh, the code breaker, the action doesn't stop, it, it never stops here, and now, oh wait, catches her. Might be thinking Koji Clutch. Koji Clutch locked in. 
it is a training of the finishing maneuvers. The, the Koji clutch after the code breaker. And it's the same thing with Eliza Stone as she does not find a way out of this submission hold soon. It could very well be over for her. Now look at this. Oh wait, Eliza forced to tap. Jessica Smith able to get it done with the Koji clutch. My goodness. And I, I, I said I was looking forward to this matchup. This commentator was not disappointed. This commentator was not disappointed. Look at that kick. I want to see more of them too. Not, not necessarily having matches against each other. I just want to see more of these two in the future. And I think we will see more of these two in the future. What a win for Jessica Smith though. As she will be taking on in the semi-finals. The winner of tonight's main event. And that main event is coming up right now after Jessica Smith's celebration. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see who Jessica Smith has awaiting her in the semi-finals. It is main event time and what a what an opening round. I, I know I think I said that for every single one, but honestly, what an opening round this has been. Uh, honestly, I, I, I couldn't think of a better main event, honestly. Usha Falls, Natalie Bannon, we've seen them collide, I think, once before. And it was a great match, so why not make it the main event for the first round of Queen of the Ring? I mean, we've seen every other match. Now we know the we know the basically what could be the full bracket at this point heading into the semi-finals. So we know that we're getting G versus Kyrie Sampson. We know that Jessica Smith has advanced to the semi-finals, and now. It, it, it's down to the main event to decide who's going to take on Jessica Smith. Will it be Usha Falls or will it be her opponent, Natalie Bannon, here tonight? Uh, I, I don't know. This is going to be interesting to see. Again, these two, these two have had a few encounters. One match, and honestly, they tore the house down with the match that they had. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Obviously, I forgot to mention that Usha unpinned, unsubmitted. So that's definitely going to be something to uh, to keep your eyes on potentially in this tournament. Who can be the one to topple Usha Falls? Could it be the woman right here? Natalie Bannon sporting some new gear as well. Who knows, man? Who knows? But anyway, Natalie Bannon, she looks focused as well, you know. Sport, like I said, sporting some new gear. But I, I think that the people know all too well that she's definitely going to be determined to win this one because, you know, Bannon had a very good start to Season 1. Very good start. But then just sort of fell off towards sort of the, the middle and the end. So perhaps this could be, you know, the thing that she needs to get herself moving up the, the card a bit more. Who knows? Who knows? But anyway, here we go. Stead out. Oh, the back elbow. Oh, and another back elbow. These two are just going to be trading back elbows here. Taunt from Usha. You shouldn't have taunted that. Oh, kick to the gut. Nice kick. And so far. You know, you don't normally see it, but we're getting ourselves a women's hoss fight. Nice drop kick there. Oh. Now look at this. Usha with the wild swings to the back. Natalie Bannon saw it coming. Well scouted and needs to go in shot for shot back elbow. Oh, big time kick. And another kick. And now, what's about to happen? Ooh, what a suplex. And then 
that first minute, Bannon seems to have the early advantage. Or oh, what's she looking to do here? Looking for the gory bomb. The gory special, whatever you want to call it. And you know that these two aren't afraid to go to the outside. We saw it the first time these two fought each other. So you, you knew that that was going to happen. It's now what on earth is Bannon looking to do? Oh! Onto the apron. Now she's firing herself up here. Referee's at two. But now these two get themselves back into the ring. Oh, what a kick. Oh, misses the second kick. And now, oh, was that shot to the back of the head there? My goodness. Oh, and now Bannon. Proving that she has athleticism. What an arm drag there. Was that a hip toss? It was one of the two. Pretty certain it was a hip toss. Oh, using the ropes. Cheap move, back elbow. And now, oh, look at this, Usha. Proving that she has that striking prowess. Stomp to the arm, that's actually kind of smart. Might weaken that Tongan death grip. We know that that's the move that Bannon loves to use to end matches. Big time scoop slam, though. Now look at this, Bannon repositioning. Usha falls, falling fist drop there. That's now all. What? What's Bannon looking to do? Might be thinking. Some form of torture rack. I'm not, I'm not really sure what it is. But whatever it is, it's done some damage. Usha with the elbows to like the, the, the temple there. Trying to go for the temple. Oh, sweep of the legs. And oh no, we've seen this before from Usha. Working on the legs, working on the back. That surfboard stretch locked in. But Bannon knows that all too well. Seems to have been scouting perhaps. Usha matches to get herself into that position. What a fisherman suplex. One, not even a two. But as I was saying, you got to think, has Bannon scouted Usha here? Knowing that she hasn't lost a match. Well, she's technically lost a match. But she's unpinned, unsubmitted. And that is where that sort of unpredictability comes in. What does it take to put Usha away? As now look at this. Look at that combination of strikes there. And she pats the knee saying that that was the, the, the finishing maneuver, if you would. And oh, what a spine buster. Goes into the cover. Two, not even a two. Got a little overzealous there. Thought it would have been a two, but it's not. And I'm going to kick to the gut. And now, oh wait. Choke slam. Choke slam coming in. There it is. What a choke slam going into the cover. One, two, not enough. Once again, proven that Usha has that resiliency. She has the ability to just take those shots. Oh, wait, wait, Tongan Death Grip. Tongan Death Grip locked in, and we have not seen Usha get hit with this before. Last time these two squared off, Usha found the counter before Natalie Bannon could even lock it in. But oh, was that a shot to the throat? Oh, but a drop kick from Bannon. And Usha is rocked in this matchup. No one has taken the fight to Usha like Bannon has in the opening round. Into a roll up one. Oh, kick out of one. Oh, shot to the, the chest there. And now stomping away. You can tell that Usha is getting a little bit frustrated. A little bit flustered here. Oh, clotheslined into the corner. And now look at this. Usha letting her aggression out. A lot of the time I'd say that's a bad strategy. But when you're someone who has that strength, who has that agility, like Usha, sometimes letting your aggression get the best of you 
might be the best strategy here. Oh, what a drop toe hole. Arm catching the ropes as well. Think about that. Still working on that arm. That's now all. Oh, oh, wow. Sunk like a stone, but wait. Oh, my. No. Choke slam on the outside. Whoa. Bannon. Oh, DDT. Bannon knows what it takes here. I think she may have found the kryptonite to Usha here. Oh, but now look at this. Taunting. I don't know if that's the wisest strategy here, Bannon. If I were you, I would just go for a big time maneuver. But I think she realizes it's going to take more to take Usha out. But old counters the drop kick. And now lifts her up. Hold on. Full of normality. This could be it. One, two to advance in the tournament. No. Bannon kicks out of the full of normality. And now old catches. Usha oh, went for the DDT. Usha had it scouted. Now to a headlock. Big time uppercut. Oh, wait. The taunt. But old oh, kick to the gut. And now, oh, look at this. Usha fired up. Look at that gorilla press. And now into the splash. Turning her around. Goes into the cover. Oh. If she had hooked a leg. If she had gone for a proper pin. I think Usha might have had that. Had that one there. But instead goes for the fall of normality. One. Two. And it's over. Dominant win there. Farusha Bannon almost had it. Able to finally lock in that Tongan death grip. But Usha just has those counters. She just... She's on a different level. But uh, Usha advances to the semi-finals. She'll be taking on Jessica Smith. I've been Byron. This has been round one of Queen of the Ring. Hope you all enjoyed. And as always, I will see you all next time.